Okay, so here we're going to do a walkthrough of a loop, a split range valve pair connected to a single controller. In this case, the one controller drives two valves through a series connection. And our task here is to verify the loop diagrams. So every team member has a loop diagram. We're going to be stepping through and verifying accuracy of all the connections, wire colors, terminal blocks, etc. So, Deb, start us off. Uh, pick our okay. loop wires there and tell us where we're, yes, what we're starting with. We have with. red to 7A and okay. black to 8A is our power source coming down. Okay, and I see that cable has a label on it. Yes, HIC that's HIC 85. Hand indicating controller 85. Everyone agree with that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. No? No, it should be we're HB. Just that, HB. We just switched it off. Oh. It's HB. We just need to, to fix that part. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and take this pen and make a quick note. Uh, you can go in there and put a more proper label on there later, but for right now, just make a quick note. That's going to be HV85. Everyone else agree on the wire colors and terminals? Yes. 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 Great. Okay. So, Deb, next step, trace that down to the terminal block, and let's find out where it goes from there. Okay. We're coming out here, and now we've got our red is going to terminal 17, and our black to 18, and at 17, it is red to red. 18, it's black to blue. Okay. And which terminal block is that? This is terminal block 11. Everyone agree with that? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and tug on each one of those wires, the red and the black, and make sure it's firmly in there. One thing you never want to do is trust your eyes when you're landing wires in a terminal block. You always want to tug and make sure they're there. Okay. And the label there says HV85. Okay. Cool. I agree with that. Next person. Uh, Lauren, where do we go from there? Go ahead and step out, Deb. Give Lauren some room. Okay, so we we're at we're still at uh, terminal block eleven, and our red to blue wires here. Okay, which cable is that? And this is our CP one JP eight. All right, CP one JB eight, red and blue. And which terminal block uh, terminals are those? And that's term. Um, excuse me. That's the red is in terminal seventeen, and the black is in terminal eighteen. Okay. All right. Let's trace that over to the next stopping point. So we're going on to junction box 8. Yes. yes. Let's find junction box 8, Lauren. That's over here on the other side of the room. All right. So we walk over here. We've got junction box 8. Junction box 8. Great. Okay. And so our red and blue, here's our CP1 JB8 mm -hmm. in terminal block 99. Okay. okay. And here is our red and here is our blue. Red goes into which terminal? Red is going into our number 9. Mm -hmm. And our blue is going into number 10. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. And then we have our place where the wiring splits. And this is where it splits. And it looks like you've uh, lifted one of the wires over here to give yourself a free terminal. Yeah. Okay. So let's pick the cable now that goes to HV85A. So Bryce, how about you step in here and follow HV85A cable onto its destination. Okay, HV85A is coming from terminal block 99 and junction block 8. Mm -hmm. It's coming out of red, should be coming out of number 9, which if you look at the cable, HV85A. Okay. Yep. So it looks like a Y, but it's a V. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, terminal number 9 is red. Uh -huh. And then the black should be coming out of 11, which it is, which okay. is coming out of 11. We tug on both. Good. It seemed to be in good. They will follow through this, to this opening here, to this conduit. All right. That comes over here. All the way over here to this IDP transducer. So yeah, unfresh that cover. That then of course goes over to the valve, HV85A. What I'm going to do here is a brief check of my tube connections, make sure everything feels tight. Does it say it's a different number? Uh, I'm just looking at the tape on the IDP. Ah. Ah, okay. We because have a wrong we, label. We'll we have, have to change that. that is, yeah. All right. If you want, I've got a marker here. We can make a temporary change. No, actually, I gave the marker to Deb. There you go. Okay. And down here, I'm going to check our wire terminations. Make sure everything looks good. I don't see any problems with that. Okay. That's our I2P. Sending air pressure to our Fisher 3582 positioner, which then goes to our Fisher control valve. And that concludes the wiring and the tubing for HV85A.
Okay. Next person. <coughs> uh, Michael. Let's go back to the junction box. JB8. At this back. point, we're going to follow the other cable. Okay, so we'll go back to junction box 8, and mm -hmm. we find this 11 and 10, which would be the red to 11, mm -hmm. and uh, the black to 10, which would be the pair of cables that would be going to uh, our other valve, HV85B. Okay. So uh, this cable is labeled HV85B, as All you right. can see. And so this here would kind of make the series connection mm -hmm. from one valve to the other valve. And so now we'd be following the cable HV85B. So it looks like terminal 10. 11 is the common junction point between the two series cables. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Yeah, so for example, correct. looking at this, <laughs> terminal 11 right there, that's the common junction point between that cable and that cable, this cable and this joining cable, right? at terminal 11. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so, uh, Ken, let's trace it on from there. We've identified the cable. Where does it go from there? Okay, so it runs down through here and, to this, and through this conduit. Right. That runs down and to our positioner right okay. down here, through this conduit right here. And that's a DVC 6000 And this is, this is a DV 6000 positioner. Okay. Which is connected to our valve, as you can see here. Right. And we got the black going to our negative and our red going to our positive, which okay. is correct. Okay, I'm going to tug on the and tug tubes on, here and make I'll sure. I'll tug on these. Make Good. sure these are nice and I also want to make sure we tug on the, on the wires up there in JBA as well. And this cable, make sure they're tight. Okay. Okay. Take a look at that. Looks good. Now, as far as air supplies That's here. I was going to ask that. Do we need to label our, our specific tubing? Well, for the air supplies, yes. I would put uh, some mark on there, at least how many PSI of pressure you expect. For example, one of the other teams has a setup where their I to P requires a different pressure source than the positioner. And they have a Valtech valve that requires 50 PSI to run the valve, but the I to P only takes 20. So there it's critically important to label the supply pressures because they are different. So in this case, let's take a look at supply pressures. We have on the DDC 6000, 20 PSI supply, which stands to reason because the valve has a 3 to 15 PSI lifting range. Giving you 5 PSI extra. Right. Over here, looking at this, you can see this one's cranked up to about 26 or 27 PSI or so. It could probably work fine to 20. Um, but I would definitely note that pressure ranges in the supply required for both of those. Okay, uh, tugging on the wires over here in JB8. I think we had one more wire to check oh, for okay. more cable. So there are HV85B. I'm going to check those, make sure those are securely fastened into the terminal block. Right. And those seem to be good. Good, okay. One final step as we're checking these diagrams, I want to make sure that the split ranging is clearly and unambiguously denoted on all the diagrams so that anyone looking here understands how the split ranging is done. Now, taking a look at this diagram here that Ken's got, I see it's an exclusive split range. Looks like HV85A handles the lower end from 4 to 20, 12 milliamps. HV85B handles the upper end from 12 to 20. Yeah. Is that in agreement with everyone? Yes. yes. Okay. And how are you denoting that on the diagram? See here, uh, there we go. Lauren has the same sort of diagram, 4 milliamps, 12, and 20 with the triangle markings, HV85A, HV85B. Cool. I, th I find that the clearest way to denote it. And I have By no means a standard. So it's right above. Cool, cool. And that's direct acting, and that's reverse acting. That's another way of showing. Yeah, because 85A closes as the current goes up, so excellent. All right. Great. Any questions? And that is a walkthrough of the loop, making sure everyone's diagram is correct.